on today's podcast. Working with my clients is that the pathogens are really a cause of toxicity. I see basically that toxicity comes first. So we are either exposed to pesticides, herbicides, mm -hmm. all the crap that's in our skin can, our makeup, we apply it on the body. And then these pathogens just come. And first of all, they do something that's called pleomorphism. So typically parasites are a harmless form in our body. And when we have these to toxins in the body, they um, pleomorph, so they transition into in a harmful person, um, a harmful pathogen, because they are breaking down all that junk that is there. They are basically not the cause. They are just what wants to remove the toxins from the body. And same with SIBO. SIBO, Candida, I feel like there is a toxin issue in the first place. And then the pathogens really pleomorph and overgrow just to break down the toxins in the body. If you're a healthcare provider tired of just treating symptoms and ready to dig deeper into the root causes of health issues, the Vibrant Wellness Podcast is for you. With insider tips, expert interviews, and the latest in biotech research, this podcast will take your patient care to the next level. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Vibrant Wellness Podcast, where we dive deep into the crux of functional wellness and root cause healthcare. Today, we're thrilled to introduce our guest, Shalene Dominique, who not only understands the frustration of the scales refusing to budge, but goes a step further to unlock the mysteries behind it. If you've ever wondered why some individuals, despite their best diet and exercise efforts, find weight loss as elusive as a needle in a haystack, you're in for an enlightening treat. Shalene not only helps countless women wade through the maze of modern health challenges, but she's also passionate about help women help helping women reverse chronic fatigue syndrome, mitochondrial dysfunction, hormone imbalances, leaky gut, gut dysbiosis, biotoxin illness, and more. Her journey has shaped her career, and by applying the principles of functional health with an individualized approach, she was able to correct the imbalances in her own body, a journey that I am super excited to hear about. So help me welcome Shalene to the podcast. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Very grateful to be here. We're so happy to have you. Um, and just like um, Jen said, Shalene, your journey has really shaped your, your career and all of the great work that you're doing now. And I would love to open it up with your own personal health challenges and that story and how it really inspired your passion, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. I'm very excited to be here and to share my story and the story about mystery weight gain and weight loss assistance. So what I think before we dive into my story, what's um, important to like clarify is how weight loss assistance is different from just being unable to lose weight, right? Because so many people are obese um, these days and there are other people that are just like not having their eating under control. They're eating too much for the body and then the body gains weight as a consequence. But weight loss assistance is really a condition where the person is doing all the right things, eating right, moving the body, getting 10 to 15 K steps in. But the body is holding on to more weight as it should be at the moment or as it has been on the past. And no matter what they are trying, like workouts, diet, exercise, the scales just does not match with the lifestyle at all. And typically it comes with a very rapid onset, as in my case, from an event that triggered it, or the weight gain can also be like very slow or low and just accumulate over the year. And then people sometimes, or women in particular, think it's part of aging. And, um, but typically the weight loss, as we know, it should be really calculable to any strategies that we are applying. Yeah. And my uh, own story with weight loss assistance is really, it happened, it started on out with molds. So I um, was in, in an apartment in Miami and the apartment above me had um, water damage and then the water broke down to my apartment and the, the, the wall was wet. And it was a drywall. And back then I had no idea about functional medicine, about mold toxicity, all these things. I never even heard about it. So um, me and my partner, we cleaned it with bleach. And I thought everything was fine because it looked clean, nothing smelled. Um, but it's actually the worst thing that we could have done in this moment because, like I said, the mold grew on a drywall. And we just cleaned the front off. And basically mold has these hyphae-like stru structures and they're growing behind the wall. And whenever it touches bleach, then this just um, makes the, much, the mold much more aggressive and it also replicates much faster. So the danger is really now you cannot see it, but the mycotoxins are in the air and they can really affect the health very badly because mold goes first after the liver and after the mitochondria. And we know mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell and the liver is our master detox organ. So this is not a good combination if these two things are not working. 
And then just within a few days, I noticed already, okay, my energy is not good. Um, I slept for 10 hours and felt like in the morning unrefreshed, like being hit in the truck by a truck. But really my main root cause or the thing that really alarmed me um, that something was not right with me is that I gained 44 pounds in six weeks. And none wow. of my clothes fit anymore. Like my face looked inflamed, puffy, just unhealthy. My body felt like swelled up. And I was always a very fairly healthy person. So I could always direct my, my body weight with diet and exercise. I was never really overweight. And then depression, mood swings, anxiety came on board because mold can cross the blood brain barrier, random aches and pains and severe insomnia. I really could hardly make it um, through the day, but really what hit, what hit the biggest toll on me was really that I didn't recognize myself in the, in the, the mirror anymore. It was like this person is foreign to me and I tried everything. Um, to boost the weight as well, same as my clients, um, diet, exercise, boot camps, intermittent fasting, one meal a day. At some points, I only drank liquids. I did the bulletproof diet where you only drink two coffee with butter in it and my weight continued to go up. So that's when I really recognized, okay, something is, is not right. How can you gain weight being on less than 800 calories? But in the beginning, I still thought it's my fault. So I tried just everything harder, more workouts, more diets, all the things. And then at one point, I really um, decided to go to doctors. So I saw over 10 doctors, which was a very frustrating experience because mm. uh, it was conventional medicine. Like I said, I had never heard of functional medicine before. So they just um, looked at my blood work. It told me everything is normal. Um, I stopped eating candy, stopped, stopped drinking alcohol when I really showed them my food journal, how I weighed and measured everything a bite I ate and how less I was eating. And I was literally breaking down in front of them and it really just um, dismissed me. Yeah. So then I found in Canada, it was back then a functional medicine doctor and it was like a better experience, but he still missed my, some of my root causes because he didn't make a connection to mold toxicity, although I checked all the signs and symptoms. And he also missed, by then I had a parasitic infection and he missed my parasites basically um, because the stool test came back negative and that's what we can later touch on that a stool test is not a reliable test for parasites at all. So he put me on 50 supplements. At that time, nothing really worked. Um, I took a trainer shot, had to inject myself. So I really was doing everything. I was desperate, but really nothing worked. And at one time, I deep dove myself into functional medicine and I learned about functional blood works and different tests. And I decided to run it all on myself and get trained. And that's what I did. And then all of a sudden in the blood work, I said, wow, my CRP, C-reactive protein, sky high infection markers, all elevated, ferritin and iron low. So that means uh, parasites are eating away my iron storage, liver markers out of control, all these mm -hmm. things that we can use. And then with the total tox burden, mold was elevated, heavy metals were elevated, environmental toxins were through the roof. And as bad as it might sound, I was really very relieved to see that because the first time in this yeah. journey, I think it was two years in, I was finally taking a breather and really saying, wow, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with me. There is something happening. And when there is something in the body that I can see on paper now, then I can now take the steps to reverse it. And at the time, I also got trained in functional diagnostic nutrition. So I applied the holistic broader cause on myself and within the first six weeks, already inflammation went down, energy went back. The first weight began to drop. So that was really um, very encouraging. And within eight months, um, I reversed every sign and symptoms and dropped the weight. Oh my gosh. My heart's like pounding. I can only imagine the relief in fin finally feeling like you had answers. Two years. My gosh, Shailene, Shailene that must have been... Horrific. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. Yeah. In two years, what I'm learning now, really being myself a practitioner is nothing at all. The women that come to work with me is 10 years on average and really getting talked, uh, taught by doctors, you are hypochondriac, you are a crazy person. It is what it is. It's part of aging, like basically going to the doctor and being left with no hope and people are sometimes mm -hmm. bad -ridden. It's, it's, it's awful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, it's that common story we hear again and again. And the fact that it, it was almost like you were destined to do this work because you weren't getting help elsewhere. Um, so I'm really wondering, you ran the functional medicine tests on yourself. What were some of the things that really helped you turn the corner? I'm sure you did a lot of different um, uh, nutraceuticals and maybe binders, but I'd love to know kind of 
what did that plan look like in general for you? Mm -hmm. So first of all, I needed to map out all my root causes, right? Because what so many people are doing wrong, now all of a sudden they know they have mold. Now they might know they have Lyme. I also had a Lyme co-infection, Babesia. And there is an order of operation. So first of all, it was important to get that big picture. What is in my body? Which toxins, which pathogens are there? Which organs are overburdened? And then there is an order of operation. So first one month, at least is always drainage pathways, because if my organs cannot detoxify whenever I'm killing or binding something, then I'm just recirculating toxins and it can make me worse. That's a lot what a lot of people actually experience when they go on a cleanse because pathways are not open. Mm -hmm. And then the first step is for me always parasites after that. And the reason for that is that parasites are like a sponge. They can hold in their bodies like viruses, Lyme bacteria, mold spores, and they can accumulate heavy metals. They eat them basically in much higher quanti quantities than the body normally would tolerate. So when I now go first after mold without killing parasite, and I do this later, then the mold spores from the parasites can come into the body again. And now all of a sudden I'm back at square one again. So addressing parasites and gut issues in general, a leaky gut, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and then really depending on how well a person is tolerating the supplements, there goes always a lot of customization into it. Then we can start really to work on mold and get the mold down from the body. And typically the last step what I'm doing is um, heavy metals and Lyme disease. That's helpful to hear because so many practitioners do a different stepwise approach. Um, but I do think that when you're really heavy into functional medicine, prioritizing parasites is really important. And, and a lot of folks recognize that. Um, and, and they are so hard to pin down. So before we jump into gut, because and oftentimes it, it can be a parasite in the GI tract. What's the best way of assessing for that and really diagnosing? Because as you said, it can be really tricky with the test, even though, you know, I will say ours is, is really good, relatively speaking, especially. But how do you feel um, or what makes you feel this individual has a parasite and treatment is indicated at that point? Yeah. So what I always do before I look at any diagnosis on paper, I always run an eight-page health history on every single client that comes with me. That's part of our initial consultation before we even sit down. I have seen that and then I really know all the signs and symptoms. And so many root causes for me are really um, a symptom-based diagnosis, quote-unquote, because they don't show up on paper. For example, parasites, they can form something that's biofilm and they can hide under this biofilm and the immune system is unable to detect it. And also so many tests are able to detect it. I think 90% of stool tests have a false negative Um then we can run blood work, but if the biofilm and look at the infection marker, but if the, the biofilm is there and sometimes it also doesn't show up. And sometimes it's interesting, just two or three months into busting biofilm, all of these markers all of a sudden show up. So for me, it's really signs and symptoms. And the most common ones are really heightened symptoms around the full moon, anal itching, weight gain, weight loss resistance, food sensitivities, in particular their sensitivity, Difficulty to sleep through the night, waking up with a sore jaw in the morning, teeth grinding, all these things. If a person like has two or three of them is particular anal itching, that's a pinworm infection. I don't need to see anything at all on paper. Mm. Yeah, yeah, great point. And I think that's helpful for practitioners. They get so frustrated with testing parasites and um, we really have to think, well, if it's if it walks like a duck, quacks mm -hmm. like a duck, right, you know, maybe treat it like a duck. Um, and a lot of these therapies are very gentle, too. So I think that. Um, you know, it's worth a shot in many of those cases. Um, and then and one what, thing that I would like to, yeah, mm -hmm. because like we are living and breathing functional medicine. So parasites is something we hear on a daily basis. But for yeah. me, it's, it's really um, interesting to see that some people still come to me and they say, oh, I cannot have a parasite. I never like traveled in third world countries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I are lingering everywhere in food, in tap water, using a public toilet, walking barefooted on the ground. So that's really very, very easy to get contaminated with parasites. It's a very good point. Yeah, I think that is a common myth, right? That we can't yes. yeah, get them as easily as we can. Right. I think they're underestimated. Um and what about, you mentioned small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We know how common that is. I'm wondering how often do you see, and I, I'm imagining it is, it's always more than one thing. It's not just environmental toxins. It's not just a parasite, um, but it could also be SIBO on top of all of this. So I'm wondering, maybe is it, um, that's probably the common place scenario. But how often do you see someone who's not complaining of any of those signs or symptoms of a parasite? 
Um, maybe you run the toxin panel, maybe not much is showing up there. I'm just kind of curious, you know, like, are there cases where you're not seeing much on the laboratory work, but the weight resistance is still there? And kind of where do you turn at that point? Are you thinking about hormones or you're thinking about other uh, places mm -hmm. to look? Definitely. So my first three go-to tests, I would say, are always, and it's always depending. So if I have the initial consultation and depending on the signs and symptoms, I really depend, look at which tests are. But the three that I really like the most at this point is blood work, the gut suma, and the total tox burden because every, everyone has something that's showing up here and it gives the first indication. And yeah, in case there's nothing showing up with weight loss assistance, it's very important to look for food sensitivities, right? Because even if they are, again, not root cause and they are caused by leaky gut and by inflammation and and all these things and parasites um still if, if we don't remove the trigger and we are trying to repair the gut but every day something new comes in that's triggering it again and again and again then we can hold on to a lot of water weight and inflammation and i also love hormone testing because it's just like i feel an additional piece of the puzzle when a person just has these struggles with weight gain it can be through estrogen and um, dominance and all these things thyroid uh, dysfunction we can just make the the path to health easier if we although it is a band-aid in my opinion working on hormones because it's not the root cause but still if we address it and can make the path to to remission easier and uh, the weight can come on off easier uh, along the way and I'm definitely thinking it's very helpful. Mm. I was going to uh, take a left turn into stress, but I'll come back to that. Since we're talking about testing, I'm curious, you know, you gather a lot of data with the, the test you just um, spoke of. So I'm wondering, especially when it comes to things like you mentioned, people are, are ignorant to the fact that they could have a parasite or, you know, whatever other findings that you're seeing. How do you bridge that gap between the testing data that you find and real world, real world application for your patients? Do you often find that, and, and I would imagine they're probably hungry for answers by the time they come to you, but do you ever see resistance and how do you kind of walk them through that, that journey of what you're suggesting for them? Mm -hmm. So definitely sometimes people, and particularly yeah. I'm thinking of a special client of mine right now, she was uh, like very resistant of thinking she could ever have a parasite and she had the most severe parasitic infection. And really the people that have a severe parasitic infection, they just have to look into their stool and then they see a lot of things that are in there like worms, parasites, and it just helps them to really um, trust the process. But most of the people that really come to me, they have been following me for a long time on Instagram or they have read to my website, they have read to client case testimonials. And at this point, like you said, they are just desperate for health and they're willing to do everything or take. So they, I don't need, do not need to do a lot of work to really um, make them believe in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. All right. And then let's see, any test results that you're surprised um, in terms of connection to weight gain? I mean, you just threw out a lot of different things, but, and you mentioned with your own story, Shalene, um, your HSCRP was elevated, you know, that's a sign of inflammation, but it's also nonspecific. So any particular test results that might have surprised you when you started learning or might surprise some of your clients? Mm -hmm. So one test to solve, like, like I said, I run the total tox burden and something that's very interesting. So when I first started out with um, becoming a functional medicine practitioner, I used to live in Dubai and I run my first total tox burden at, on me in Dubai. And I was having the same lifestyle, right? Like eating, um, living, just like are, are almost the same. So one thing that's very interesting for me now is I moved to the United States and even my total tox burden got worse. Like I'm, I have sky high glyphosate levels. I do eat mostly organic. I don't eat a lot out. Yes, I do eat once in a while out. And then and there are no rules that I would not eat the piece of bread or whatever. Like uh, I have the 80-20 rule at home. It's uh, healthy. And when I go out, I enjoy myself. And that's just something very interesting. The glyphosate levels, every single person that I'm running the total tox burden in my practice on that lives in the United States has sky high glyphosate. Mm -hmm. um, so it's basically we are exposed to it not just through food, it's probably sprayed in the air, whereas my clients in Dubai and uh, I have a current client in Ireland, no glyphosate at all. So that's definitely something very interesting to see. Mm -hmm. And I also feel um, what I've learned throughout um, working with my clients is that the pathogens are really a cause of toxicity. I see basically that toxicity comes first, so we are either exposed to pesticides, herbicides, mm -hmm. all the crap that's in our skin can, our makeup, we apply it on the body. And then these pathogens just come. And first of all, they do something that's called pleomorphism. So typically parasites are a harmless form in our body. And when we have these toxins in the body, 
the amblyomorphs, so they transition into in a harmful person, um, in a harmful pathogen, because they are breaking down all the junk that is there. They are basically not the cause, they are just what wants to remove the toxins from the body. And same with SIBO. SIBO candida, I feel like there is a toxin issue in the first place, and then the pathogens really pleomorph and overgrow just to break down the toxins in the body. That's super helpful to walk through. I think it's, uh, wow, it's really the toxins that we contend with every single day. It's really creating these super bugs, if you will. <laughs> exactly. And Jen, what you said about the testing, our specific um, example comes to mind, like what helps people to see it on paper. So when we run the total tox burden, we have a lot of environmental tox. And then people always tend to think they can get away with things like, oh, I'm using the shampoo, I'm using the hair care. But if all of a sudden parabens and phthalates are through the roof and they see it on paper, then they are committed to make a lifestyle change. It's the same as food sensitivities. I noticed I had an egg sensitivity, like I got severe uh, fatigued after eating eggs out of the blue. And I also got puffy again, but I was like, I'm trying to get away with this for a few months and then I'm like, okay, I need to run it. I need to see it on paper. And it was like in the high um, sensitive range. And then from then it's a no-brainer, right? You just cut it out because you know what's it, what it's doing to your health. Yeah, it's true. Seeing it on paper makes all the difference sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's that objective data. You know, anyone and um, everyone can tell you one thing, but the, the data is really a different story. So, mm-hmm. um, and... Really, I'm wondering, before you even get to the lab testing, Shalene, is there anything on your intake form? You said you have a very long intake, which is common among functional medicine practitioners. Anything that you think you ask on your intake forms that other practitioners don't, uh, maybe in terms of history, uh, maybe things that clients don't generally think about when they go to the uh, a healthcare provider's office? Yeah, definitely. So things like breast implant illness. Do we have breast implants? Do we have root canal? Do we have amalgam fillings? These are some things that people typically, or sometimes I see that they only talk about signs and symptoms, but you also have to look at the past, right? What was being fed to you in your childhood? Did you have vaccines? Um, what diet uh, in, in childhood even were you reactive to? So these are all a lot of signs and symptoms. And I also particularly ask about drainage pathways, but I think it's still missed. So if a person doesn't sweat on a regular basis, they pass me lymph or mitochondria. It's just very, very in-depth and just by seeing where most of the points are falling to, that really helps a lot to um, already may form a picture of what's going on in the body. I was going to ask, uh, apart from your amazing success story, Shalene, is there a story or two that really stands out in your mind uh, of, of a patient or client that you've worked with that really turned the corner? Oh, yeah. Like I have, hmm. she came to work with me like six months ago. And she has been, since she was 19 and now she's 33, she has been chronically ill. She went, she is dedicated. She went to every doctor under the sun, did all the exams, supplements, um, workouts, diet. She was like only eating, uh, like drinking liquid foods anymore. She was then for 600 calories, so more than I was. I was 800 back then, but she was not at 600 and still gained weight. She signed up with so many practitioners and she said like in the beginning, she maybe could lose one, two, three, four, five pounds. But then throughout the journey, she always continued to gain weight. And she was like, why is this happening? Like she was judged eating secretly. She only eats salads and really the healthy stuff. And then she came to work with me and I saw in her blood work, like all her drainage pathways were overburdened, like the liver, the gallbladder, the kidneys, the bowels, the mitochondria, the lymphatic system. And I heard her like an intense um, drainage opening, opening drainage pathways protocol for six weeks. And within the first four weeks, she wrote me a message. She sent a picture and says, Shalene, my pants are falling off. They are not fitting <laughs> anymore. Lumps and bumps are dissolving on my body. I don't know what's happening. So this wow. was a major breakthrough for her. And for her, it was also a lot of emotional relief because she was for so many years just eating healthy that she didn't even dare to touch something unhealthy. And now like within the process, she's actually learning to eat more, quote unquote, normal again, right? She's daring mm-hmm. to eat food. And she's still losing the weight. So that was very, very amazing for me to see. And then maybe another story of my current client, Michelle. Um, what was stood out with her, she was also very dedicated in wanting to get to the root of her symptoms. It was also weight gain. But the majority that she really endured was like she was bedridden at six weeks out of time. She maybe couldn't even go out for a walk. She had a son where she was feeling so guilty because she couldn't keep up with him, just giving him the tablet while she was on the couch having no energy. 
And she also ran from doctor to doctor and she just said, like, this can't be normal. And she, when she, before she signed up to work with me, she said, I'm afraid even to spend that money because like it will just be another diagnosis of your blood work will be normal. And I said to her, I swear to you, your blood work will not come normal. If it comes back normal, I will fund you your money. <laughs> and um, she was being told by doctors, you are a crazy person. You are hypochondriac. Stop making up your symptoms. You're not unwell. And that really st stood out to her. And we ran the testing and she also checked 90% of the signs and symptoms of Lyme disease and her blood work indicated a lot, um, liver, mitochondria, parasites, all these things like digestive distress. And now it's about six months we've been working together and I saw her the other week on Instagram. She's on a pedal board. She's with her son on, on going for a walk. She's going to bridal showers. So she, she's on all the activities that she hasn't been able to do before. And her mother even said to her, wow, like, a year ago, it was impossible for you to live life. And now you're already doing all these things. That's what amazing. What a testament. Yeah. And I want to get a little bit more uh, more granular here, Shalene, with the drainage, drainage pathways for listeners who might not be well versed in looking for signs of that. So on laboratory and clinical presentation, of course, constipation is the big one that comes to mind. You're not having regular bowel movements. That's an issue. But what other things can be a sign of poor drainage? And elimination. Yeah. Also, if the stool is very hard and it's just very difficult to pass some stool, it's also already a symptom that the bowels might be constipated. Or if you just have the feeling you're not fully eliminating when you go to the toilet and you really need to go every single day, um, optimally two times or three times and not just one time. And then we have the liver, right? Like when we feel very irritated, if we cannot tolerate alcohol, if we cannot tolerate caffeine, um, anger outbursts, anger is sitting in the liver. That's definitely one, like the lymphatic system, not being able to sweat, edema, swelling around the body, mitochondria issues, just being chronically fatigued, and it might also tie into the inability to sweat. And then just also with the mitochondria, it comes also in particular in that we are holding on to weight because what mitochondria are doing, they're oxidizing body fat, so they're getting rid of body fat. So when we have the combination of being wiped out all the time, plus the body is gaining a lot of weight, that also indicates, yeah, we need to have a look at your mitochondria. Makes sense. I hear you. And I also want to dive into, we've talked so much about the physical aspect of weight loss resistance and so many things that can feed into that, um, the, the presentation and you're getting, you know, talking about mitochondria, but there's also a ton of frustration that we've already touched on, you know, years in the making for so many individuals. So how do you blend mind, body, and spirit practices into your uh, treatment plan? Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing question. And I feel like it really needs to be their mind, body, spirit, because like when these people have been 10 years already working or trying to work when they have and nothing works, then it's their, oh, sorry, this mindset, right? This is the next thing. It's not going to work for me. Or like when you, Chen, you said about chronic stress, like people come to work with me, they look into the mirror, they're pinching, they're fed on a daily basis. They see their body as fed. And we know the cells are listening to it. There's our subconscious mind and whatever we feed the subconscious mind, the conscious mind cannot rewire it, so we really mm -hmm. need to do this. And I have a program in place, so beside when people are working with me, it's called the Break to Weight Loss Formula. It's a video module when they are going through, and like every month, I teach them a different um, mindset practice, like tapping, like all these different things, how we can rewire the brain. I have a meditation that I recorded myself that really goes into like letting go of these past beliefs, because sometimes I feel emotions are such a big issue. If you cannot work on those, I can almost give a person every single supplement under the sun. If they are not letting go of the limiting beliefs, like I cannot lose weight. This is just how I'm meant to be. I am overweight. That this is how my life is determined. Yeah. And then it's very difficult to, to really get the people to 100% being into remission and losing the fat. I'm curious, what kind of um, practices uh, do you share with your, your clients? Mm -hmm. So tapping, for example, is one uh, subconscious mind meditation where we really where they should listen to this meditation like right after waking up or right before they're falling asleep when our subconscious mind is the most active. Basically, they can also listen to it during the sleep so that the subconscious mind just gets rewired. In a child training, because if something mm -hmm. um, worked is, has happened to us in the past, we need to work on the inner child. So these are a few examples. We surely yes, I love it. Um, well, this kind of bleeds into the the next question, and I'm sure some of these will be examples that you can share. But because we know lifestyle and diet modification is so crucial when it comes to this, 
Um, what practical tips? I'm curious, just in your day to day, Shaleen, like what are some of your daily rituals or habits that have really sustained you on this journey? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was also very important, in particular when I started to build my business um, as an entrepreneur, I kind of have a lot of work to do more than like the average nine to five job, I would say. In particular, when you're passionate, like there's always the danger of working all the time. So I was also like very driven in this go-go-go mentality and some things that really have helped me to really keep my cortisol in check is so I go every single morning out barefooted on the beach and I watch the sunrise. This is just how I set my day, how I say affirmations to myself, how I want to spend the day and just like visualize, visualizing also my day, how I want it to look like. And then also we have to, someone actually told, talked me, taught me about the sentence um, that helped me a lot. So I'm thinking a lot about it. And um, if something doesn't go as we, um, as planned, so to speak, right? Like if we maybe quote unquote are failing in one area of life, mm -hmm. but this person told me like everything in life is perfect, right? Everything mm -hmm. always exactly where we need to be. And we don't need to hang up on ourselves. We're just human. Mm -hmm. It's just a human experience that we are having here on earth and everything is perfect. So that's just for me, like so wonderful to be able, if I'm doing something that I'm like, oh, Australia, you could have done better. Then I'm just like, no, everything is perfect. I love yeah. that. And then definitely um, prayer helps me as well. So connecting to God. Um, yeah, these are just the things that I do in daily life. Okay, wonderful. And for maybe the, the average person who's listening today, what are some immediate signs or symptoms, <clears throat> excuse me, that they could be looking out for if they start to experience these and maybe that's like a, a red flag, hey, maybe I need to go talk to someone. What, what are the typical ones that you see? With your clients, you mean the physical signs and symptoms? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, chronic fatigue, just not being able to make it to the day, taking naps, headaches, because these are all very common symptoms, but they are not normal. Constipation, then anal itching is a big one. If you are having heightened symptoms around the full moon, unable to sleep through the night, you should be really able to go to bed, fall asleep sleep eight hours and waking up refreshed in the morning, just never waking up refreshed in the morning or having like almost a hangover like feeling in the morning, mm -hmm. although you didn't have any alcoholic beverage the night before. Um, weight gain is of course one of the most common ones that's like just creeping up, although we had, didn't make any changes in diet and exercise, brain fog, memory issues, unable to recall words, conversations. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a tickle in my throat. That's okay. Um, I was going to ask you too, obviously, you know, we, we know people are coming to you because they're eager and, and like we talked about when they're faced with the data, you know, it's, it's clear the next steps that they need to do, but do you ever come across clients that maybe face some challenges when integrating these holistic practices or protocols that you're um, giving them? And then how do you kind of guide them uh, or redirect them or help them along the way? Yeah, of course, uh, that typically happens, yeah, because we always also need to get to know the body. And I always say, like, I always have a very gentle approach in the first two months. And then when I say, okay, how does the body respond to supplements? Is this a person that seems to be more resilient or do symptoms already spike within the first two months? That's when I determine, do I follow a more sensitive approach or can we really go more aggressive? Because some people really, they need these therapeutic dosages, otherwise they won't get better. And this is also why they haven't seen results in the past with practitioners because they always follow the standard dosing, right? But some people, they need something aggressive to be for the body to let go of the, of the toxins and of the pathogen. And for example, my client, Lauren, um, we had six months great success. So she dropped 25 pounds within the first two months, first five months. And then her big cause was Lyme disease. And as we know, mm -hmm. Lyme disease is the one area where I think it can really, where, sorry for my English, but where shit can hit the fan. <laughs> And she was just very eager. So the Lyme disease protocols are basically a self-paced protocol where the client has to decide how fast can they go up. And she was like, I just want to get to the end of the protocol. I want to be finished. I have been doing so well. And she like up those her, um, her, 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 her tinctures that truly really took 10 steps back. And I had really to stop her and I had to say, no, we have to go completely off. No more killing at all for at least four weeks. We have to like let your body recover. We need to be able to feel safe in your body again. And then we go step after step and we are really doing like a very slow approach because we really want to see where is your body reacting. And of course it can be frustrating in the moment, but 
like I always said, like when people have been dealing for chronic illness with over 10 years, it is unfortunately not a sprint. It's more a math marathon and we have to be realistic to really get to the end goal. It, sometimes it's yeah. six months for people, but more often we always look at the one year or even uh, one and a half year if it's really been 10 years, if they have mass selectivation syndrome, if they're like really highly sensitive. Yeah. Right. I could see, though, you know, as you're seeing these results and feeling better, how you just want to amp it up. So that's it's interesting. It's kind of the flip side of the problem. But yeah, still. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely that type. I just want to knock it out. Be yeah. done with it. But it is so often the case. These are complex cases. So upwards of a year is kind of what we typically hear in functional medicine cases, or you even said upwards of um, a year and a half. So. I think that that's um, just really, really important for perspective. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, we talked a lot about the focus on patients. Of course, we're all here to help clients and patients. But I'm wondering if you um, were to address a practitioner, what would you be your top piece of advice? Maybe something that you wish you had known when you started learning about functional medicine. Yeah. I would say really being 100% dialed in on signs and symptoms because sometimes people, they read to the signs and symptoms, okay, in one ear out, in, in the other ear out, and then to just focus on the test papers. But I always say our bodies are speaking to ourselves. The signs and symptoms are really the body's language to say, hey, here is something not correct. And I always prioritize signs and symptoms instead of test results because like relying on a test of paper, everything can go, go wrong in a test basically, yeah. right? Um, it can just be role performed, like the client maybe that didn't perform it right. And then all of a sudden it comes back clear. Or for example, with the total tox burden, I always like to um, challenge the, the total tox burden with glutathione that we really like allow the body to let go. And some past practitioners have not done that. And then when it just comes back clear and the client presents with 90% of the signs and symptoms of mold toxicity, but the body is just holding on to that mold and doesn't want to let it go out of the fat cells. So I would say um, something that I wish uh, I would have been trained on from the beginning is like really always keep the, the signs and symptoms as a priority in your mind. Yes, absolutely. I agree. And we're always saying tests don't guess, but also you have to clinically correlate what we're seeing on paper to that individual sitting in front of you, because it's so easy to go down those rabbit holes and say, what does this marker mean in regards to this marker? And, you know, it, it's kind of fun to get caught up in just the objective data, but it's more meaningful when you pair it with exactly. the, the clinical case. So yeah. I think you explained that beautifully and it's really something easy to miss that shouldn't be. Um, so and we're getting to the end here. I think we have so we could unpack so much more, but before we let you go and do our rapid fire three questions, Shalene, is there anything exciting in the pipeline that you're working on, studying, planning, or anything else that you'd like to share? Um, just maybe something that I would like to share is to really everyone who has chronic illness or has symptoms or just doesn't feel well, and there is always a root cause for it. Don't let yourself be gaslighted by doctors or maybe by past practitioners. Never give up for looking for the answer because there is always an answer. And it is 100% possible to thrive in life, to not manage, live life with managing a laundry list of symptoms. We are really here on earth to live our lives the best possible we can. And it's 100% possible. Beautifully put. I love that. Yes, very hopeful. All right. Well, we've gone over a lot, as I just said. We talked about weight loss resistance and many different contributing factors, including parasites and environmental toxins, amongst other issues that go alongside that. Um, and you've really given us a lot of pearls throughout this talk, Shalene. So thank you so much for being here. Before we say goodbye, can we learn a little bit more about you with our three rapid fire questions? Of course. <laughs> Wonderful. Jen, take the first one, please. All right. Perfect. So one material thing that you can't live without. What would it be? Um, at the moment, it's brain tapping. I'm addicted to it. <laughs> brain tapping. Okay. Yeah. So is that that's like tapping, but is it just centered on the brain? No, it's basically um, some classes that you wear. They are like having headphones as well. And they have like visuals, like uh, electro, electro lights that are stimulating the electro system. And you can basically get um, you connected to an app. And you can have it for everything. Like I had a, a big problem like years ago to fall back asleep. Like it took me a long time to fall asleep. Now I'm like putting on the headphones within 10 seconds. My body already knows it's time to go to sleep. And I'm <laughs> sure that's a game changer for me. Also, when I'm traveling and I need to just adapt to the different time zones, I use the brain tapping. 
um, to fall asleep. But like I said, it's not only to fall asleep. It's also for, um, there are some um, meditations for addiction, for alcohol, for weed, uh, for visualizing your dream life, working really, it's really a, a, a tool to um, rewire your brain, so to speak. Very cool. And that's the name of the product. It's called Brain Tapping? Brain Tap. Okay, okay. Brain Tap. I'll have to I've never heard of that before. Neither have I. Very cool. Love it's it. like okay. a little story behind it. Um, like I said, like I was not believing in that something could really help me to fall asleep at this point. And I was like about two years ago on a biohacking conference. And, you know, when you are like in the halls, right, there's this bright lights, so you are hyped up and you're like connecting with all the people and uh, talking to everyone. And this guy approached me, said, would you like to try our brain tap um, to fall asleep, to take a relaxation nap? And I was like, mm, of course, like if this would, <laughs> would be my but I was willing to go on the, on the chair and I just laid down and within 10 minutes, I was like asleep and I was like, no, I need to buy, to purchase this wow. thing. <laughs> That's we <were> cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? I was sold. That's All right. happens. I'm going to look into it. <laughs> All right. Next one, Shalene. If you could be any superhero or have any superpower, who or what would it be? Um, I don't know which superhero, but if I could have a superpower, it would just be to sometimes to quiet my mind. Mm, that's a good one. I hear that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And then what would a perfect day look like to you from start to finish? Oh, yeah. I, I've just been coming back from Costa Rica. So I can just basically say an example day from the health and the lifestyle. There is so much different than in, in America. So I think like we get up, like we already know which day or which day of the week it is, like what we have to do. We have a to-do list that we need to check up on. So it's like very um, fast paced, the life here in the, in the United States, I would say. And in Costa Rica, the perfect day for me was just like waking up in the morning, not knowing even which day of the week it is, just <laughs> turning around one more time and not jumping right off out of bed and just sleeping or taking an extra nap and um, connecting with people for breakfast. Otherwise, just being in the moment, being surrounded by nature, going on a horse ride along the beach and watch the sunset and uh, grab a bite to eat with people. Yeah, I love it. I wish I was there right now. I'm channeling my, <laughs> myself to Costa Rica. Awesome. Well, we cannot thank you enough, Shalene. This was a lot of fun. And, and like Dr. Army said, we definitely could dive a lot deeper. Uh, we appreciate your time. And for listeners, we'll have everything in our show notes. Um, let it let the listeners know before we go where they can find you. Yeah. So I will post every single day on Instagram. So it's Shalene, S-H-A-L-I-N, and then a dot and Dominique. And I also have a website, shalindominique.com, where I really publish a lot of content about chronic illness, weight loss assistance, different root causes. Yeah. And I will attest to that. I've seen Shalene's Instagram. She does a lot of great educational short videos. Um, so definitely check that out. And thanks again, everyone, for listening. Until next time, stay vibrant. Thank you so much for being here today. Don't forget to leave us a review and subscribe so we can continue to pay it forward together. And remember, the key to longevity is knowledge. Keep learning, growing, and tuning in to the Vibrant Wellness Podcast to discover the latest insights and strategies for optimal health. Join us again next week. Just a reminder, this podcast is for educational and informational purposes and is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The views expressed by guests and hosts are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy of Vibrant Wellness. As always, consult your healthcare provider before applying any recommendations that you heard here today.